everyone, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Trump here with Eric Spilligoy, who's back in the office. Yes. After some travel to happy Florida. Yeah, actually, happy so warm, warm Florida, I might add. Yeah, it was actually interesting, Paul, after all these months to wear short sleeve shirts and no coat again, but I did enjoy my time in Orlando at the Commodity Classic. Well attended, Paul, about 9,000 attendees total, and uh, it was the second highest number of grower attendees the show has ever seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of folks on the floor are talking about the marketplace. In general, folks are kind of feeling a little more upbeat than they were a month ago because the shutdown's over and I guess stuff is finally starting to happen in the marketplace. Orders are being placed. And one of the highlights was Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture. And here's what Sonny had to say about the recent uh, farm bill that was signed uh, by the president. I didn't realize it had been that many years between when Congress had introduced the Farm Bill in one year and passed it in the same year. So we were glad to do that because I felt like our folks at USDA would work very hard. They call it technical assistance when the, they ask us at USDA. Now, they're the legislators. They, they do the bill, and that's what it should be. But our guys have got a lot of information they need in order to get it right. And uh, our folks at USDA provided over 2,000 incidents of technical uh, administration, technical assistance to the Congress that way. Both sides, uh, Democrat, Republican, and uh, House and Senate. And uh, they worked hard on your behalf to let the, far, let the Congress know what would happen. You know, I'm sure you've never heard of any unintended consequences in, the, in any legislation. But that's what we tried to avoid, the unintended consequences. This sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. Whoopee! And you push here and it goes out way over there. So that's what they did, over 2,000. I'm really proud of the team for uh, uh, USDA for their help in that regard. Even though they didn't write the bill, they helped those who wrote the bill. So uh, we're happy. So that's what Sonny Perdue had to say regarding the Farm Bill, Paul. And uh, I know that one other bit of news that came out of the Commodity Classic is uh, we found out, I guess back uh, a few weeks back, Willowwood USA filed for bankruptcy. And it looks like the folks at AMVEC are uh, bidding on some of their product lines. And we'll find out here probably in the next month whether or not their bid is accepted. So there have been some rumors around that they weren't doing so well. And... Um, I know that they were looking for leadership late last year and yeah. in some conversations at Crop Life America. So I guess it's not uh, not horribly surprising, but uh, you know, another, I guess, victim of some of the challenges we've got going in, in crop protection overall. In yeah. Ag. yeah, and, and again, it's, uh, you know, some more, some more names that we've known in the marketplace that are disappearing. I guess you've been following some of this story too, right? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, we had, of course, we had Nutrien and uh, uh, and now their acquisitions. You know, I guess it's the haves and have-nots, and Nutrien is definitely in, in the haves. Yes. Um, purchasing, you noted there was a purchase in Australia yes. of, yeah. of a retailer. $338 million, I think they were called Loco Coal. Um, don't quote me on the name, but yeah, it was it is Australian retailer that Nutrien just purchased. So. Yeah, and then, of course, Van Horn uh, in Illinois, a very strong uh, independent retailer down there that seemed to be pretty well set up for the future um, ended up selling. What, and this stuff happens in a hurry because we, we uh, got the notice, went on the website, typed in Van Horn, and immediately the Nutrient website. <laughs> so these things happen, and they happen, and they get completed very but, quickly. But it's not only Nutrient, Paul. I mean, a lot of the big players, I mean, Growmark purchased uh, Northwest Ag uh, late last year, which was another one, top 100 in the top seven, buying someone else in the list. And, uh, you know, Wilbur Ellis also purchased someone, uh, Wiles Farmers Brothers, I believe, uh, recently. So, I mean, the larger retailers are uh, basically expanding their footprint across the U.S. Yeah, you wonder, with Nutrien, they're trying to position, I'm sure, themselves um, to take advantage of everything that they're investing in. The biocontrols company sure. that they recently purchased, and, of course, Agrable, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, with soil health and, and, and sustainability, and then... Um, E You've got them, you know, yeah, investing in the e-commerce uh, e commerce platform that they promise they're going to be rolling out in, in 19. Um, there's a lot of kind of a lot of things that a lot of tentacles that they're putting out in the marketplace. And now we're going to see uh, see some of that come to fruition and probably trying to support 
all that work that they're doing with as much of a market reach with, with strong people and strong locations as they possibly can. Yeah, it's just interesting to me, Paul, that we're seeing all this movement in the beginning of, uh, of the year, even before the growing season is kind of kicking off here. Uh, I know normally, you know, like say five years ago, when we had a big wave of consolidation and the larger companies were buying smaller players in the market, um, most of those acquisitions were taking place during the summer after, you know, the uh, books were closed at the end of June or end of July. Um, so this is a bit odd that we're seeing so much activity early on. Uh, I, I suspect it'll be interesting to follow as we do our Crop Life 100 later this year. Yeah, everything's a little bit upside down with this administration, you know. We've got the, you know, the tariff pressure and True. the global pressure in the markets and, and, and you know, reading the tea leaves, it's, 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 a, little, it's a little different. Um, trying to figure out where things are going to go in the future, and the pressure is a diff almost at a different time of the year. You know, we're, we're seeing this, you know, in January, February, March, as opposed to as you always you say we usually see it October, November, yeah. December. Once harvest wraps up, it's like okay, yeah. Then everybody the, knows yeah. what their numbers were and if whether or not selling makes sense. But now we're getting it, like I say, before things are taking place. So interesting stuff. Yes. And we're born. So you, were we traveling? What are you doing next week? Um, actually, we're we here. Actually, we, we are, are actually here. here. So, I mean, yeah. I'll be making a little road trip uh, during the day on March 12th to our friends at Precision Tank to see their fiberglass manufacturing facility in Indiana. But other than that, I should be around for our video. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll be here next week. And in two weeks, I get to go to the Ag Tech Investment Summit uh, over in uh, San Francisco. Rough duty, Paul. I'm attending. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's got like they they have a lot of people there, so I'm just gonna walk around and harass the venture capital guys. Two words for you though, restaurant. If you like garlic, <laughs> check out the Stinking Rose. Uh, they're famous for all their dishes having a lot of garlic in them, and the most famous dish they have is a forty clove garlic chicken. I never had it myself, but I hear it's delicious if you like garlic. Good gravy. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> and that's if a you great. come back from the stinking rose, we'll move your chair a little further over that's when a, we're doing the video. It's, it's a great way to make connections with people. You that's know, true. I guess it's memorable. Oh, yeah, you're the guy that stunk the high heaven. <laughs> oh, I remember wanting to talk to you. Great plan, sir. Oh, All hey, right. I, I try to help. Well, that is mercifully it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.